Big night. What yep. happened at your house last night? I shot a YouTube video and edited and uh, put it on, actually. I'm so it's live? It. Oh, yeah, it's, it's been on live since last night. Done my fourth episode. Yeah. I'm doing my, uh, I don't know, 800th episode here. <laughs> been doing this for 10 years like a crazy person, but hopefully... Uh, this is not his 800th episode. This is like episode number um, probably 40-something or 30-something. Yeah. Uh, I should go back and count. Anyhow, it's Thursday, 5.30. We are live in the Well Season Kitchen. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we have the door open today. It is such a beautiful day here. Uh, the sun's shining, and it really feels like spring. I can tell that by my allergies. <laughs> uh, and the sunshine, it's... Uh, yeah, it's so nice to have the sun out and... Um, I, I find the outdoors really overrated, I'm not going to lie to you. The outdoors are overrated? Yeah, and, uh, all my stuff is at home, why am I outdoors? <laughs> well, you take a wild animal from the forest and give him the comfort of home, security, hot water, fridge full of food, that animal is never going to leave that space and defend it with their life. Like, you're it's, such it's, a it's philosopher. A, no, it's not. It's a very irrational be behavior on humans' end. I'm like, <laughs> I get it. Everything get home around me. I have my dog, my guitars, my kitchen. What am I doing? Your in the wine, yeah, your what food. What am I doing in the forest hiking? I, <laughs> I don't know. And you're right. Anyhow, an answer for it. <laughs> how's your week been, Dee? Uh, week, this week has been good. This week has been good. I um, Not in the... In particular, my next door uh, neighbors are moving out. So I'm looking forward to use my drum set until somebody new comes in <laughs> and really abuse that um, uh, freedom. Um, I don't know. No, no, yeah, nothing, nothing ever happened. I, um, nothing new. Nothing. Just right. uh, coming here, going back, coming here, going back, hanging out with my dog. And uh, yeah, what's new with you? Uh, not a lot, really. Just busy with work stuff. Just okay. getting ready for Easter next week. Lots going on around here. Oh, yeah. Oh, so much cookie dough. 200 <laughs> pounds of food out of... <laughs> 200 pounds no, of... 200 uh, portions of... Uh, beef brisket. Uh, beef brisket. Brining away for corned beef. Your friends are a lot of work. <laughs> but we're, we're thankful that you're supporting it. And, and, and I'm, we're, we're glad that um, you're enjoying it. I've, I've been hearing nothing but good words. Yes. Except for that one lady, but we don't talk about her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I cooked Irish food. That, that week we had Irish episode. Everybody turned out to be Irish. You're Irish. Jack is Irish. I'm pretty sure that lady is Irish, too. Um, I didn't know any of this. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad I didn't mess it up. She was quite upset, though. Uh, what you going to do? Yeah, well, she'll get over it. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, we got lots of good comments on last week's uh, episode. People really liked it, and um, hopefully you guys have had a chance to cook some of the food um, at home that uh, we talked about last week. Last week the was scotch. the, um, yeah, scotch, scotch egg. egg. Everybody was, like, so impressed with the, I, everybody I spoke to said they had never been anywhere where they saw a scotch egg that had, like, a runny center. And, uh, yeah, it was so delicious. Um, anyhow, that... It eats so luxurious when it's running center though. Yeah. It's it just, 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 it's one of those perfect food. Yeah, it was pretty delicious. I, mean, I don't think Scottish has a whole lot of cooking other than oats, but uh, that is, that's one hell of a dish if, the, if it's their dish. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to you making that again someday soon. Um, you know, just throwing that out there for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but tonight, um, is the cauliflower episode. I'm kind of excited about this because we eat a lot of cauliflower at my house. Okay. A lot. Um, we don't typically eat potatoes and pasta at my house. David's been doing keto for a really long time. I've been sort of on and off keto with limited success because of mostly offness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and apparently the wine is a challenge, but whatever. Uh, so we do eat a lot of cauliflower at my house, so I'm always interested in new ways to cook it. Uh, we make cauliflower mash, and you were, like, surprised how much cauliflower mash we sell here. I, I just, the, the name, I just didn't get the name. I, I, I didn't understand the... We, we call we it should, faux should, tatoes. Should we talk about this now? Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, uh, we, have a, we have a little dish called a faux tato, but I'm like... When I first read it, I'm like, what is a potato? And she goes, like, it's mashed cauliflower. I'm like, why would you call cauliflower? 
And can I tell you this? This poor vegetable has been uh, like messed around the most. You see the rice form of it, and and you see the oh, there's a mashed potato form of it. Ah, there's the vegan wings. There is the cauliflower crust pizza. There is the yeah, because it's, 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 it's a very versatile vegetable. Yeah. But literally, we forgot to cook it for what actually it is, and that was that's why I wanted to pick it this week. I'm just like all that stuff is great. I'm gonna come back to potato in a minute. Uh, all that stuff is great, but let's just, like, when was the last time you had cauliflower and cheese sauce? Uh, yeah, my mom made it. It's like pure comfort food it's, for it, me. It, it's, it's one of those life's great pleasures, and nobody eats it. Everybody makes a risotto out, out of it, the pizza crust, this and that. I'm, uh, tonight, I want to cook that. And also, uh, I would like to cook a little bit of uh, Middle Eastern uh, version of it. We eat this actual dish at the hospitals. It's hospital food in Turkey. At the hospital? Uh, it's served with yogurt. I'm going to serve with tahini today. Uh, deep fried carrot, deep fried cauliflower, and this and that. But yeah, like this, this vegetable has been uh, pushed around for the longest time. Uh, that's why I really wanted to do it. I don't eat a whole lot of cauliflower. I don't pursue it. I, I enjoy eating it because uh, it would come in a you know just a lunch restaurant steamed as a veg on your plate. You just like look at it, nothing it doesn't yeah. go anywhere and. Uh, but cauliflower is kind of like the little white dress of the kitchen, I guess. You can turn it into so many things. You can use it as a filler in, um, you know, like for casseroles and things like that. It holds up really well. Yeah, it freezes exceptionally yeah. well. I think um, it's like a great vegetable. Yeah, with the exception of soup. Cauliflower soup. There's, there are some soups I'm not going there. Uh, I think it's gross and, and, uh, <laughs> and it shouldn't be practiced. I like uh, cauliflower soup. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I feel sorry for you. I really feel sorry for you. Uh, like, it's like carrot soup. Like, what? Or, or uh, root vegetable, uh, cream of root vegetable, whatever that is. Like, we made root vegetable uh, roast last night. It didn't go. So uh, It's soup today. I've, I've, I've worked with so many cooks. Say, hey, we're doing potato gratin. Next thing you have leaking potato soup. Oh, it's a French. I'm like, no, you lazy bum. I'm like... <laughs> That's not how it goes. Mm. I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a fan of a cauliflower soup. I've never had one that I really truly do enjoy. Uh, but other than that, all other forms of it is great. But cauliflower is a great veg if you are cooking for yes. a vegetarian or vegan because it can you can use a lot of the same sauces and ways you're cooking for non. Uh, vegans or veggies like if you're making butter chicken you can use the same sauce and make butter cauliflower if you're doing you know some sort of Asian style stir fry you can sub the chicken or the meat for um, cauliflower in the stir fry um, it, it resembles that texture yeah, yeah. it is it is a, it is a substitute um. a big trend a couple of years ago was the cauliflower steak where you cut big oh. slices of it and then either pan sear it or grill it or broil it and um, really... Hey man, you want a steak, you just order a steak. <laughs> and just, I'm like, that, that's... I literally, and I'm, I'm not doing this because it's trying to be cheeky or anything. I, I grew up in the Middle East where food was food, like it wasn't right. It, it was center of the table, but it wasn't like... Uh, disengaged with, with, with all these fancy twists and turns. So um, when I come across to... Um, these things here, and I still do, after 15 years in the kitchen, I get caught up by surprise with some people's uh, approaches and do, does, uh, dishes. Um, that's why it, it, it genuinely doesn't register. I'm like, what do you mean, what is a potato? Why would you call a cauliflower potato? Why? Because we can. Because when you're doing, uh, when you're on a restricted diet, you want the mashed potatoes, you want the comfort food. So our faux potatoes is cauliflower mashed okay, with so cream and butter and cheese and bacon. So the whole keto thing that goes down. That is keto. Oh, is that keto? is totally keto. Oh, I didn't know that. So keto you can is eat high dairy? fat, and you can eat dairy. Keto is high fat, no carbs. So really? dairy, you can eat dairy and keto. He yeah. does. We eat a lot of cheese at our house. Yep. Okay. So awesome. keto is no carbs, no sugar, but high I thought it was only fat. meats and vegetables. Nope. Lots of dairy. Otherwise, I would die. I could never do that. I couldn't give up my uh, my cheese, that's for sure. So that's our faux potato. So it's like mashed potatoes. So it is as a... So okay, that makes sense now. So so you, are, you have something that resembles potatoes because you love potatoes so much. Right. Exactly. Sorry, I just turned everything off. All right. Um, uh, he loves when I do that. Yeah, um, yeah you can. So anyhow, <laughs> tonight we're like 
dressing up sort of the basic cauliflower and giving you some ideas that you can use maybe as side dishes for Easter dinner just on a Wednesday night if you're looking for something new to try or you can turn it into a whole meal and um, turn the make the cauliflower your center of the plate you know what's one of my favorite ways to eat it um, there are two ways actually that cauliflower steak is a bit of a weird approach but a whole roasted cauliflower mm -hmm. uh, covered with a little bit of yogurt glaze and egg yolks. Uh, uh, we, we call it um, El Basan in Turkish, uh, the, the style. It's a uh, big internet uh, sensation lately. Yeah. Whole cauliflower Bef roasted. I, it, it was there before the internet in Middle East. Uh, but yeah, but it looks very uh, appealing to yeah. the eye as well as, you know, just uh, I guess it might just like substitute as a rose if you have a. Uh, a uh, plant-based household or, or friends. Yeah, I think for if you're doing the whole roasted cauliflower, you have to blanch it first though, right? Ah, it depends on your oven temperature. It depends. It, it will eventually cook because the yogurt crust is going to create a lot of steam. Right. So if, if you want a softer cauliflower, yes. But if you want a little bit on the toothsome side, not raw, but uh, a, little a, bite. Toothsome, a little bite to it, I would just leave it alone. Um, and I, I absolutely love cauliflower stew when it's really mushy, like, have you ever had it like yeah. that? Like, like curry? Curried, yeah. Curried and a tomato uh, uh, butter base and, and you just cook it until it's so tender. It's because it's not a thing in here, eh? Uh, usually the French um, style is just to blanch the vegetable, which is whatever, I, I, I don't uh, do practice that. but. Um, but you have baby vegetables that's offered to you. In, in Middle East, when we were growing up, the farmer is not going to sell you anything baby because then he's not going to make enough money. Right. So when we get spinach, spinach is like this big. So you have to cook the heck out of it to be able to, uh, to break down the fiber. So we ate a lot of mushy vegetables. They're actually, um, it throws some people off texture-wise, but they're actually quite delicious. Like when you have a really mushy green bean cooked with uh, anchovies, tomatoes, and onions in the oven for, uh, for a good while, I think if you're doing something like you're talking about, like a butter curry with cauliflower, you can even use frozen cauliflower. And sometimes fresh cauliflower is so expensive. So using frozen cauliflower that you can get on sale or really inexpensively works really great in a curry. I'm not sure it would translate to anything you're doing tonight, the frozen cauliflower, because the, it uh, tends to give off a lot of water once it's yeah, been frozen. So the, 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 the cell structure would that. No, I, I wouldn't. It's, it's affordable enough to just go grab a head. Usually it is, yeah, yeah but, but cauliflower if you're, if you're sometimes. In a, yeah, remote areas, they're usually a great staple. And also cauliflower is sold after not for its taste mostly, it's really for its texture. So even if it's, um, you know, not the bestest cauliflower, uh, it, it will do a justice to your cooking or frozen and whatnot. So um, chef, when you're buying cauliflower at the grocery store, typically you want to look for like a nice white um, blemish free head, but quite often the cauliflower comes with little black um, it almost looks like a little bit of bruising on the outside. Do it's, you cut that off? Yeah, yeah, I just scrape yeah. that. I mean, it depends. If it's just started to make its way into uh, the core of the cauliflower, then yeah, um, yeah, I wouldn't buy that. I wouldn't and buy I that. notice here you've cut off quite a bit of the stem. And so did you keep the stem or are, are you using Today it for something else? I did else? not keep the stem. Okay. But I should have fed you tomorrow at staff lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, I didn't keep it, but stem is completely edible. Yeah. And so it if you're, completely edible. would you add stem to your stock pot? I, I wouldn't no. necessarily. It's too strong of a flavor uh, for stock. No. But um, you can add. It's, um, it's, it's not garbage can. It's a stock pot. Yeah. I mean, there, there are things that can go in there. Vegetable scraps, sure, but. I mean, zucchini peel, I'm like, yeah, there's no But sense. you can eat everything on the cauliflower, not just the florets. Yeah. You can eat the leaves and everything, too. Um, just cut them up and throw them in a stir fry or whatever you're doing. So This wine is quite delicious, too. I know. So I went over to see our friends at Liberty uh, Wine Merchant just around the corner tonight. Told them Chef was making a creamy cauliflower gratin. And uh, they suggested this really delicious Chardonnay from um, Argentina. It was a little on the spendy side, but we don't oh, have any. <laughs> um, you're not getting paid tonight, so this is what we're having instead. I'm the only one who's getting paid tonight. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me correct that. So um, the Chardonnay is a little bit on the spendy side, but if you're having a meal that doesn't have any protein or any expensive ingredients, you can spend a little bit more, uh, more money on the wine. At least that's what I tell myself. 
uh, to justify. <laughs> I don't have a problem. It's oh, no yeah, problem at all. <laughs> it's no problem at all. So we're having a little Chardonnay just because I think it'll work really well with the um, with the gratin and the cream cheese sauce right. that you're making. But uh, pour yourselves a glass of wine, uh, maybe a Treat pint of yourself. beer. Treat yourself. It's Thursday. It is Thursday. Cheers. Um, Seriously. I think uh, Kay was going to, if she hasn't already, post the are the oh, the recipes are in the comments. So follow along. You can uh, download the recipes and watch Chef D. Make sure he's um, following the recipes. If you have questions Why? while <laughs> while he's cooking, uh, just go ahead and type Only them dog into is the. To do that. <laughs> just type your comments uh, into the quest and your questions into the comment bar, and I'll relay them on to Chef for you. But um, yeah, we're gonna get cooking now. So um, yeah, let's let's do this. All right. I am ready. All right, welcome to Thursday, uh, live with me. <laughs> Hope you know my name <laughs> by now. Um, so we're just going to talk about, um, how should we start? Now, for the cauliflower gratin, I need to poach my cauliflower and my leeks. So for gratin, I left my florets uh, rather large. I would say two ounce pieces. Um, but for deep frying ones, deep fried ones, we are gonna do uh, smaller ones. This is just salted water. And I'm gonna lower them in salty water here. And I'm going to poach them about four minutes or so. I also have leeks. Leeks are some of the best onion, formal onions uh, ever. If you're not eating leeks, please have leeks in your life. They have a very unique aroma and they're exceptional with seafood. Now, while that is uh, blanching away and softening up, um, I'm going to uh, break my cauliflower into little florets. Uh, this batter is a um, um, is an anti-batter. <laughs> and and uh, you know what that means is um, we always go for a thick uh, cody consistency. But this one I learned from one of my friends. His name is Angus. He owns a Thai restaurant. And he makes a cornstarch slurry. Uh, that is quite loose. It's actually one to one. It's very easy to remember. With uh, cornstarch and water? It's cornstarch and soda water I'm going to use today. But cornstarch and water is just fine. And I'm going to take my cauliflower and toss it in cornstarch so the batter sticks slightly. You don't have to do this. You can totally uh, do it from uh, just, just straight up cauliflower. But this just gives a little bit more batter. Now, what that does is, uh, oh man, I get cornstarch all over the place. And what that, uh, that does is just uh, gives a really nice light, light crunch. Nothing gunky, nothing uh, heavy or whatnot. Um, again, volume wise, equal parts of cauliflower and soda water. And I'm, uh, soda water is ice cold. And I am going to grab my uh, frying oil and start it to bring the temperature up. Oh man, she's quite vocal today. Started to bring my temperature up. As of now, I am sitting at only 115 Fahrenheit. Let's crank the heat up. No, not you, sir. You, sir. All right. My cauliflower florets, uh, smaller ones, toast in uh, cornstarch. Here I have almost a cup of water. We have a soda stream at work now. That luxury keeps on rolling. Yeah, we're so fancy here. Nothing but the best. Soda water today, new cars for everyone tomorrow. It's <laughs> like, basically I'm Oprah over here. Also, I'm looking to buy a truck, just a heads up, if anyone <laughs> knows out there. Chef D's in the market for a vehicle, if anybody <laughs> knows any. Since we get to know each other, we're friends by now, so we might as well just uh, start talking to each other and share information okay chef you did sorry one cup of cornstarch is that what that was yeah for for this i mean it could be anything it's equal amounts of cornstarch to cold water or cold soda water but it doesn't even lift up like i'll show this to you it's hilarious it's actually quite nice butter. It's exceptional with really nice sliced fish, such as cod. 
Like literally, there's nothing to it. It's basically a slurry. It's it, it is a slurry. It's what you would uh, thicken your um, you know your sauce with or your sauce with or let's check on the cauliflower a little bit more. Mix more. This is gonna take about four or five minutes. Now. All right, let's see where we're at. Sorry, I just had a pause there for a second. What kind of oil are you frying with today? Gra grape seed. Grape seed. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is a very good oil to fry with if you can afford it. If not, you buy just canola. Canola is just fine too. All right, this stove top is not doing it today. Perfect. So, um, shake off the excess, goes into my slurry. Slurry, slurry. So just toss it in cornstarch and then add it into the slurry, just like you would if you're frying some chicken or something. Exactly. Just, just a different way of doing things. You know, we gotta, we gotta share new recipes and new methods, right? So um, you get to take him home and uh, show off to your friends. Okay. And I'm going to toss this around with a spoon. And I'm going to take this, my spider, put it onto my spider and let the excess drip. Perfect. See how easy cooking is. I've been doing for 10 minutes of talking and uh, we almost have an appetizer. What's the temp you're looking for on the oil? I, uh, I like to do this around 250, 275. Uh, so that the cauliflower has enough time to cook. If you go too fast, you'll be too, uh, you'll have too much brown uh, too fast and your cauliflower will be toothsome. We're going in very, very carefully, right? So there was no seasoning in there, just the cornstarch and water. Exactly. And then we're gonna season it um, after it comes. Now cauliflower is not a vegetable that you can salt ahead of time. It doesn't do anything, it's got a really firm structure, so, um, uh, what do you say? You have to season it after it comes out. Yeah, like sprinkle uh, salt on raw cauliflower is not gonna do anything anytime soon. It won't stick to it. No. Now, with the sauce, we're gonna talk about the basic white sauce, your mac and cheese sauce and whatnot. But before I do that, what I would like to do Take the temperature one last time that we're at the right spot. Are you temping the oil or the cauliflower? Not the cauliflower, no, just the oil. People temp cauliflower? They I don't like want it medium rare. Cauliflower steak medium rare. Only if a diner would say that to me. <laughs> I would kick him out of that restaurant <laughs> so fast. So fast. Send my cauliflower back. Tell the chef it's not properly cooked. I ordered it medium rare. This is obviously well done. <laughs> Throw your yoga mat at me. <laughs> That's called stereotyping. So the leeks and the cauliflower blanched in the salted water for like three or four minutes. You just watched it about like six minutes until the cauliflower is nice and soft. Now, gratin of cauliflower is a soft dish. It's not a texture dish. It is a dish of comfort. Um, and uh, mushiness and creaminess and all those wonderful qualities um, that are kind of actually frowned upon, which I don't know why. Let's get rid of this pot. Now, after they come out, as you can see, it is white as molasses. I don't think that's an appropriate analogy. Uh, yeah, sure. White as snow. Molasses snow, yeah, yeah. is not. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's your show, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't correct me. Just uh, be quiet yeah, yeah. so I can uh, do this. It's okay. Uh, three pieces of cauliflower. I'm going to put my poached leeks on the side. I love poached leeks. They are so tasty and delicious. My, uh, here. You know what, let's put more cauliflower. Also, this stuff freezes exceptionally well if you want to assemble it. 
just so you know. So assemble it and then pop it in the freezer, take it out when you're ready to bake it. Exactly. We like bechamel cheese, everything. So you can prepare your Easter dinner this weekend and get it all ready to go. And then Easter, you can have a giant hangover and still pull a great dinner off. Right? It's all about being ahead of time. Now, I have a bit of bechamel here, which we're going to make it in a minute with you, that I would like to use. Now, first things first, I would like to get this conversation started. I mean, look at that. Oh, my God. And then we are going to get this all nice and bubbling. And then uh, we are going to pull it out, and we're going to cheese and broil it. This is going to be awesome. I'm excited. I haven't made cauliflower gratin in uh, God knows how many years. So this, um, this gratin method is a little different than what I'm used to. I would always sort of cheese it first. So what's the advantage of doing it this way? Well, you get, so, okay, here's the thing. If you have time, okay, sorry, let me get my cauliflower out. As you can see, it's... And you're just looking for color on that, right? The, the uh, color and doneness. Uh, it should be nice and tender. And by touching the vegetable, you'll be able to gauge that. Okay, so, the, uh, a... So why am I uh, double sourcing it? Yes. It's because we have very limited time here. Now, if I was to just take my uh, bechamel, put it with the cheese in there, and put it in a 325 degree oven, in 25 minutes it would be perfect. Everything would be golden brown, crispy, and this and that. But I can't have it 25 minutes here. So I'm just going to get my bechamel going and reducing it nice and bubbly. And then we're just going to slap the cheese on top and put it right under the grill so we're not uh, keeping you here until 11 o'clock is what it is. And uh, that's, that's just like a little method. But at home, uh, even from frozen, 300. From side for a second. But this is extremely hot. And let's make a little dip. Because you got to have a dip, right? We love a dip. I know. You guys are a saucy culture. Um, I, what I have here is... Uh, little tahini paste. I'm just gonna grab a little whisk here. Okay, now to this you have to taste your tahini paste. Some tahini pastes are looser, some are thicker. So this one is medium thick and it's got no seasoning in it. I find by the time you get to the end of the container of tahini, it's pretty thick because you've used up all the oil from the... Yeah, it, the, the sediment. Yeah, it's like uh, the peanut butter. Yeah, pinch of salt, sumac and... Uh, sumac and... Uh, cumin. You have the ratios in your recipe. Lemon zest and lemon juice. I'm going to loosen this up. Sorry, did you also add water? I missed that. Or no? No, not to the just tahini. lemon juice. Now, here's the thing. If you have really thick tahini and you're adding lemon juice and it's still thick, you have to add a little bit of water. But if you have loose tahini, and, and the only way to say, um, figure this one is uh, just to taste it. Chef, do you keep the tahini in the fridge or do you keep it in the cupboard? I keep it in the fridge after I open it, but I'm pretty sure you can keep it in the cupboard. It's not, it shouldn't be a big deal. It's just sesame seed paste. It's kind of like peanut butter, so. Yeah. Uh, two cloves of raw garlic. Because what would life would be without raw garlic? Obviously. Right. And then we're just going to taste this. Mm. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> I have nothing to say to that. <laughs> Maybe touch more lemon juice. Because I'm a... Uh, I think this tahini dressing is one of my favorite things for... Um, it is such a versatile recipe. And yeah. just keep this recipe. Again, let's pour the dip in. It's luxurious, it's creamy, it's delicious. It's like Turkish ranch dressing. You put that stuff on everything. Yeah, Turkish people don't eat like that. Just don't, don't, don't think of it that way. <laughs> She's not accurate. <laughs> okay, so with my cauliflower. So you put the cooked cauliflower in that bowl. Yep. 
And the cauliflower is just gently seasoned with some salt when it came out of the fryer. Aggressively, but yes. It's, it's just like a diff, very different approach to the regular one. And I'm just gonna sprinkle some cilantro. Now, if Angie could uh, digest, I would have uh... Okay, well. They can't hear her. They can hear you from your microphone. Okay. Um... Uh, would you like to come and taste this? Yeah, sorry. Um, um, yeah, let me get a fork. It's, I mean, it's, it's a very different uh, way of uh, doing a uh, breading. It's so crunchy. It is, it is a different, it's a very light crunch. Mm -hmm. and it's very flavorsome, even if it was like seasoned afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see, yeah. this is dinner. <laughs> That's uh, a good dinner to have. This is an excellent dinner. Um, yeah, this is so good. I wonder if, um, yeah. Do you think that batter chef would work on potatoes? Everything. Ah, uh, why on potato? I don't know, because sometimes when you roast a potato, you would want just a little bit of crunch, but you don't want to. I would just, uh, potato has enough starch that you can actually get those crunch from its own starch. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> sorry, I just uh, was distracted with the uh, idea of drinking wine. Pomegranate molasses is so good. Pomegranate molasses. If, if you don't have a bottle at home, come to uh, come One and Season. Get one. Come and get one. It is one of life's great pleasures. It's Man. a really dirt cheap version of balsamic shrizzle. Whatever that is. Shrizzle? Shrizzle or shrizzle. What shrizzle. do you like, Snoop now? <laughs> I listen, actually, yeah, I've been listening to rap. For rap shrizzle. Music. For shrizzle, what? Rap music lately, a whole Anyhow, lot. Anyhow, this cauliflower is delicious. It is so good. I'm really glad you're enjoying it. I'm going right. to eat all of this Yeah, right yeah, now. take it away. Um, and the sauce is so good. If you've never made a basic tahini sauce like this, make it. And it keeps in the fridge for, I don't know, a couple of weeks with the fresh lemon juice uh, in it. I would say more than at least three, four weeks. Yeah, and um, you'll be putting this on everything. This will be like your new Frank's hot sauce. Yeah. Also keeping the temperature low yeah. and uh, enable to um, cauliflower to cook. Yeah, really good, Chef. Thank you. Awesome. So, I'm just let me let the wine go. The wine is actually quite delicious. That's why I have it in my hand. Perfect. Now, the basic white sauce, or bechamel as we call it, is a staple. Every cook, it's one of the, uh, in the modern cuisine, it's one of the, mother sauces meaning it's one of the main five main sauces and uh, every good cook should know how to make a um, great bechamel now there are a couple of tricks to this you can't make a really great lasagna without a good bechamel i agree with that statement yeah, that is correct um Okay, so let's start. Um, it starts with uh, butter and flour, equal amounts by weight. Um, and then if you're using uh, 100 grams of butter or 100 mils of butter, whatever it is, uh, that is your 10% uh, as a thickener was gonna give you an awesome sauce. Um, meaning if you're using uh, 50 grams of butter and 50 grams of flour, you will need 500 mils of milk. And I always uh, add um, also, tenth uh, of uh, cream to the mixture as well, meaning 50 ml of butter, 50 ml flour, 50 ml cream, and then 500 ml of milk. Sounds good? So you add the cream just to give it a little bit more viscosity, I guess? It's just, after the flour is cooked, it just uh, thickens it really, really luxuriously. It, it, it just gives that continuity to the sauce. Now, however, though, if you don't uh, start uh, really right, and uh, then your fl uh, bechamel is going to taste floury. Now, butter goes in the pan. And for this, you're gonna need cold milk or cold cream. If you use hot, 
it is more prone to um, go lumpy, but if it goes lumpy, it's not the end of the world. Grab an immersion blender, blitz it, or uh, you can, um, or you can pass through a sieve and take the lumps out. All right, your butter has to melt. Is Dave uh, holding a timer or what? Pardon? Doug. Oh, Doug. Doug, are you paying attention to the timer? He's here with us tonight. He was excited when he thought we were giving out new cars a minute ago. Yeah. <laughs> Doug, Doug, now, Doug you're gonna... the official timer at the Well Season Kitchen on Thursday night. <laughs> I'm just pulled my uh, cauliflower gratin out. It is going uh, 100 miles a minute here. And I'm gonna turn my broiler on. All right, my butter is completely melted. You want, you don't want a brown butter, or be unique, make it with brown butter. Whatever you would like. To the butter. Now I'm gonna start to uh, fry my flour in the butter. Now you want your flour completely cooked at this stage. If you don't cook your flour properly in the beginning, uh, then you will. Uh, you will again have a floury sauce and it's not gonna go away by cooking. So this is the most important stage. As you can see, your base should look like that, maybe a little bit thicker, but it's important to uh, really fry your flour. To this, I'm gonna add some fennel seeds. Too so, close. I'm sorry, so you're making a roux here, right? That is correct. So. Um, uh, the proportions for butter to flour are equal, is that right? Yeah, we talked about it for like two, two minutes. I know, but somebody asked. So, uh, this is how it goes. Um, equal amounts of butter and flour by weight, that is. And then uh, you multiply that by 10, that's gonna give you your milk amount. And then whatever your butter or flour amount is, just use as much cream, if it makes any sense. Okay. Garlic. Garlic is an is optional in the bechamel. You don't have to have it, but you know we're cooking a nice gratin, so we might as well have it. I'm just gonna get the aroma, and we're gonna add our milk. Let's get rid of this, and we're gonna add our milk in. Uh, I would say. The first uh, three, four times, 30 or 40 mil at a time. And then you have to make sure that your flour absorb all your milk. Then I'm gonna add a little bit more uh, milk to this. If you don't do this and dump all of your milk all at once, now if you have an immersion blender, you can get away with it. But, um, but I highly suggest you don't, and just do this part right. After you pass the halfway mark, actually I'm gonna put, because I'm doing a small batch here. After you pass the halfway mark, uh, you are going to, um, you can add all of your milk and then whisk it away. That is perfect, that is gonna whisk away. And to this, I'm gonna add a little bit of Dijon. <laughs> Chef Kitty just posted, she said, oh my God, she made a whole fried cauliflower to herself right now and she's eating it all. <laughs> she says, thanks for the recipe. I've always wondered how to do it right. She's gonna post a picture later. Kitty, I, I feel you. I just feel like ordering another uh, round from Chef. I've eaten all of what he just gave me too. It was I, delicious. I can't, I can't wait. Um, I put a little bit of Dijon mustard in there. You have it in your recipe. It gives an excellent acidity. It is a very smooth acidity anyway. So not the grainy mustard. You can use grainy too, it's a texture. Why not? You can absolutely do it. Uh, half of my cheese goes in. So, Chef, you're not using any nutmeg in your bechamel. I will. Quite, I always you, finish you're with it. You're going to? Okay, cool. I always finish with it. And then I'm going to add my egg yolk, my cheese, and then grate it. Now, obviously, in real life, you will have, after you add all of your uh, milk and cream, you will have to cook this at least. Uh, you will have to simmer this at least five to six minutes. Okay, let's whisk it. And use fresh nutmeg, please. Yes, unless you're cooking difference. for 300 people. 
like, you know, you don't want to go at a big uh, party of, uh, you know, no key and do this. Now, I'm just going to refresh my other bechamel and eventually when you cook this, it is going to thicken up nicely and become a sauce. This is slightly cold, that's why it's a little bit too... Uh, so if your sauce thickens up on you too much, you can just add a little bit more milk or cream to loosen absolutely, it. Absolutely, absolutely. That's uh, that's highly doable. Have you seasoned this with salt and pepper? Ah, uh, that goes without saying. Not pepper. I don't use the pepper, but uh, salt. This needs a splash of milk. Uh, sorry, chef. Did you season it already? I missed that. This version is seasoned, this version is okay. not. But yes, you, you do have to put salt in your uh, bechamel. And what kind of cheese did you use? I love using uh, Gruyere, Gruyere or Swiss cheese. Yeah, that, that is just perfect. It's awesome. Now, just Angie was right. As soon as you just add your little bit. Here, let's do this. Let's work clean. And then... As you can see, when it's nice and warm. Now, this looks fantastic, but I'm going to uh, put some awesome sauce on here. Just a little bit in the bottom. And I'm gonna cover it with uh, melted Gruyere. Now, if you can't find Gruyere, Tex-Mex is just fine. It's, it's fine, it's, it'll still be delicious. But Gruyere has a uh, young Gruyere, uh, especially, but today we're, uh, using the richer version of um, Cave Age Gruyere. Has an incredible uh, aroma and, and, and funk to it, so it, it actually um, accents the cauliflower beautifully. Let's pop this under the broiler. I think it gives it like a really delicious nutty kind of flavor, the Gruyere, yeah. um, that you don't get from other cheeses. And it's not super Swissy. You know sometimes when you have just a basic or cheap Swiss cheese, you get that almost it's almost acidic, you know what I'm saying? Like that Swissy kind of... Yeah, yeah. Also, um, I know they are not as popular, but uh, there's a cheese called that the uh, Polish deli is called the Royal Polish Cheese, and everybody calls them that name. Um, that cheese is pretty awesome too. Like there's a lot of actually national cheeses that are in the same um, flavor profile with the... Uh, Gruyere. Is Polish, the Polish cheese like a grating cheese like this one or? It is, it is a nice young cheese that is exceptional for uh, melting. Like, you know, you know how they say American cheese is good for a grilled cheese? I mean, you should try the Polish cheese. It is quite incredible, as well as provolone. Provolone is a very good cheese too. In a bechamel? Really? For melting in Yes, general. for melting. But uh, in a bechamel, I think you want something that has a little bit of flavor. That's why I think the Gruyere is just so perfect. Yes, but Gruyere is such a novelty cheese, um, but it's hard to find if you're in a small place. True. So, so if you have, don't have any options, what I would do would be I would use an older cheese for its flavor, and then younger cheese for its uh, melting qualities. Uh, older being the cheddar, and the younger cheese being the, well, if you have no option, you can go mozzarella. Better. You know, just uh, melting mozzarella, but um, again, uh, or uh, cheddar and provolone. You know um, what I mean? Because because you you really want that oozy, um, cheesy effect to it. And maybe add in a little bit of parm or something to kind of bump up that like aged kind of saltiness that you get from the Gruyere would work well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Parmesan Reggiano would be amazing. Do you ever do a topping for your uh, gratin chef with like a breadcrumb or buttered breadcrumb? I don't or know. Do I get to have another glass of wine? What? No. Yeah, then, yeah now you're not getting any breadcrumbs. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. It's not a textural dish. I know we're auto, like we, we have that, like as professional cooks usually do that, I gotta put some texture on texture. Some stuff I genuinely wanna leave it alone. Um, instead of cauliflower, you can take a Belgian endive and uh, do the same thing to wrap it in ham. That's the Belgian version of it, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is actually quite delicious. Let's check on our uh, gratin. Was cheese sauce a thing in Turkey? Cheese sauce is not, no. No, it's no, a thing here. No. Yeah. I it, grew up with cheese sauce, but it was orange. My cheese sauce growing up was like a mixture. No, it was cheddar cheese. Well, it probably had some like 
maybe Cheese Whiz or some Velveeta in it occasionally because, you know, we weren't super rich when I was growing up, so it was whatever you could get. And cheese sauce was the only way my mom could get my sister to eat vegetables. So, um, yeah, my mom made a lot of cheese sauce. <laughs> I know, and, and you know, another thing is I did not have gravy until uh, KFC opened it. Like meat and, and gravy, and so, you yeah. mean? Oh. We, we don't have the brown sauce. We have a uh, tomato. That's, that's pretty much it. We have tomato sauce. Hmm. And, and, um, the, and if it's summertime, we eat fresh tomatoes, fresh tomato sauce. If it's wintertime, we uh, do a tomato paste number. So you're just looking for color on that now? You're looking for it to kind of right? brown, cheese yeah. to melt? But again, if you're at home, 350, assemble everything, put it in the oven, go just uh, take a shower, have a couple glasses of wine, come, come back in oh, half an hour. Oh my God, that smells so good. I can smell the cheese coming out of the oven. Yeah, cheese, um, cheese, cheese gets people. So if you wanted to do this as a, a main dish and you wanted to include some protein in there, some little pieces of ham would be really delicious in there. I would put, I would put something mild in there because this dish is about cream, lush, like it's not onion, it's leeks, it's uh, oh, there's some wine over there. Let me say. <laughs> <laughs> I like this a little bit of the smokiness of some ham or some bacon in this dish would be really yeah, nice. But I wouldn't go chorizo, or I wouldn't go very strong salami, or or um, um, I, I would stick with uh, farmer sausages actually. With Johnson's yep. uh, farmer sausage, it's, it's it's actually quite good. Um, but it's such a perfect side dish. This, I mean, for it just really any need meal. Anything really? No. Like it's th this is an awesome dish uh, next to a steak, especially if you're keto. You know. And when I burn it, I burn it really good too. <laughs> I don't go for golden brown. I was uh, I was uh, sentenced to golden brown for the first five years of my career, uh, trying to act like we're all French. Then I realized I'm like, wait, I'm Turkish. I must bring Turn on the, the heat color. up. Turn the heat up. Bring on the color. Bring on the flavor. And uh, and it worked really, really well. So, chef, do you do this same recipe with other veggies instead of cauliflower? What else would you use? I do it with use? leeks. Yep. Just plain leek gratin. Yeah, it's yep. it's an incredible thing to eat. What else? Uh, Broccoli, Brussels sprouts. No, 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 I actually do it with cauliflower only when I do it. I think it's it's such a perfect dish that has that has it all. Like, I, I don't do substitutes too much. I'm not a substitute person. No. I, I usually do classical things. I'm and, uh, very, very simple in that is, understanding. Is this the same uh, method you would use if you were doing it with potatoes, a potato gratin? Potato gratin? Oh, not okay. potatoes, <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> um, for potato gratin, I don't use bechamel because potato naturally have starch in them. I use want half the amount of uh, liquid and I only use heavy cream and it, it just comes out uh, and I've made a lot of different potato gratins like you know super uh, technical ones and this and that you know just the good old stuff works mm -hmm. the only thing I do with potato gratin is I salt my cream rather than seasoning my potatoes I can control the overall seasoning uh, but I don't do caramelized onions I don't do excess cheese just literally potatoes hot cream I bake it covered for about uh, the 325 until the potatoes are nice and tender. So you don't blanch the potatoes first? No. No. Why? Why? It makes no difference. Are you ready for some gratin or what? I'm ready. Uh, oh my God, it smells so good. It is also very, very hot. So that's why you don't grab things with a wet towel. I mean, look at this. Oh, it's bubbly. We can see this, David, right? Yes, we're Yeah, so it is just, like, who would say no to that? I don't know who would say no to that. Maybe a vegan, but I don't hang out with them, so. Pick your friends. Hold on. <laughs> Nobody I know and love would say no to that. Now, I'm going to get this uh, hot pan out of the way so Angie's not... And I love that it's in its own little personal gratin dish. It's, it's like, got to come like this. It's though. like you're at a fancy steakhouse. Have you ever been to Ruth Chris? That's how they serve everything there. Like some yeah. really overpriced, delicious steakhouse. 
Um, I don't I don't mind paying a lot of money at a steakhouse. It's a fun night out. Yeah, if you get a really delicious steak, for sure. The best steakhouse I think I've ever been in, uh, unfortunately, in Las Vegas. It was Tom Colucchio's uh, steakhouse. Yeah. Uh, it was It was just the happiest meal. And I, it, it was expensive, but I just didn't care. Um, that actually looks very, very good. Would you like to give it a try? I would, except it's going to be 9,000 degrees. Well, that's... Uh, that's the cost of doing business? Exactly. That's, uh, you know, you don't get to complain about, you know, just how oh. stressful it is to deal with crime if you're a policeman. <laughs> just, uh, this be fresh nutmeg, I'm not kidding you, this makes all the difference in the world. And if, I mean, they're so inexpensive, they go on forever. They keep, after you've grated it, just keep it in a sealed container and it'll keep in your pantry for a really long time. But this is, I mean, you have to have this in your pantry for lots of things and just a few grates. But did you know if you um, put too much in somebody's food, you can kill somebody with nutmeg? I heard you can really party on it if you swallow a whole one. <laughs> yeah, nutmeg is yeah. poisonous. It's, it's actually, a, it gives you hallucin, hall, uh, just that stuff. Here. So David, were you able to eat this? No. No. Okay, good. Not today, good. Good. I'm not I'm just, sharing. Because I just no, I just figured out the dairy and keto is uh, friendly with each other. Well, David isn't doing keto right now. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. David's got a different I, situation. I felt like an ignorant chef that is unaware of his guests. And this is like nine thousand degrees, but the the cauliflower is like I I don't want to say mushy because that's not the right word, but it's like very I mean, soft and that's perfect. That's what you want, though. Mm -hmm. Hot. It's a lot. Oh my god. Isn't it delicious? It is delicious. Small things done right is... Uh, and the leek in there, there's um, just a little bit... I don't know what the word is. It's not oniony. It's just like... It's the, a leek. The, but it's, it's super subtle. Yeah. It kind of melts into the dish, the leek. And it's just... It's because it was blanched first, it's totally perfect. You can see the leek has kind of started to break down and melt into the dish. But it's, that's the whole thing you want. Just yeah. soft leeks are one of life's great, great mm -hmm. pleasures. Mm -hmm. You know what, I'm intrigued to try this. Well, eat from the other side, so I'm, I didn't mean to double dip, sorry. Oh, double um, dipping is gone after COVID. You can eat on that side. Yeah, I haven't yeah, touched it's, that it's half. A, it's a, just chill. Um, yeah, that's so good. Oh my God. Right? With the Chardonnay. Woo. Oh my God. Try it with the wine. It's perfect. So perfect. I'm going to make this tonight. I'm going to have two to go, please. <laughs> we should have this tomorrow. We should have this tomorrow. That, um, is, that is, oh man, I haven't had cauliflower gratin. Did before, you try it with so. the wine? It's perfect combination. We cook some pretty good food here, eh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Pretty, pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, my God. Okay. The cream sauce, the best amount, the cauliflower, the leeks, and a Chardonnay. Do yourself a favor and try that this weekend. It is phenomenal. And if you uh, do a test run this weekend, you're going to love it. And this is going to be part of your, your family Easter dinner or Easter brunch. You could serve this easily with um, uh, some brunch food. You could add this to some bacon. And this could be the whole thing. I just would sit and eat this as a dinner with a little salad any given mm -hmm. day. Yeah. Vegeta vegetarian sh food not need to be boring, man. No. You just got to find good vegetables and do justice to them. Just 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 simple things done right. Just 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 I mean really this is so right. basic. It's butter, flour, cream, some veggies. All of our recipes are. Yeah, there's, there's they are. nothing like um, sure some ethnic ingredients uh, that come into play. But when you look at the structure of the recipes, they're very, very it's, simple. Things. It's just simple food done right. And it's not complicated. But once you understand sort of the principles of delivering the dish properly, I hope you learned a couple of things tonight about blanching the cauliflower first is key. I think a lot of people put the cauliflower in the dish raw and expect for it to kind of hydrate from the cream and stuff. And it will, but it'll take a really long time. Not necessarily it will. It'll still retain that bite if you want that bite. But again, this um, this dish to me is all about like mushy, mushy cauliflower, just giving almost like a little texture just for you to for for you to an ex, sorry, 
an excuse for you to eat a cheesy sauce. Just, just, just some structure so you don't feel really bad about yourself. It's like sourdough is just a reason to eat butter, basically. Hey, I am not. I, I don't agree with this. <laughs> sourdough on its own is just, uh, it's, it's probably the most rewarding experience that you could cook. We should do a sourdough. But it's sauce. even more rewarding with butter. I could lose the butter with sourdough, to be honest. It, it is more rewarding. I agree with that part of the statement. But uh, We should do a sourdough class. How can we do here, a sourdough not class? No, not like this. All okay. right. We, when we, we go back it. to our real cooking lives. I, I love those sourdough classes because um, people think that they're just going to step in and just uh, knock it out of the park and start making perfect sourdough and whatnot. I'm like, no. I said, also, this class is no fun at all because it's theory. Because mm -hmm. if you don't understand the theory, there's no chance you'll be executed uh, Thing, which is a daunting task on its own, uh, but it is doable. I always say that it's this is a start to your journey of making sourdough. The rest always relies upon it. But why are we talking about sourdough? <laughs> but anyway. So uh, we've had some requests, chef, to do some risotto. How do you feel about a risotto next week? Sure, we make risotto. Though. No, I know, but people are looking. We did a tomato base one, I think, right? We did a tomato. But the mushroom, the David's episode, we did it. Was it a... It sort of finished with miso and this and that. So maybe with spring, asparagus is coming. I don't know. Maybe we can do a risotto next week. But um, you can think about that. We're still taking suggestions. So if you have some ideas of things you'd like to learn, next Thursday is the Thursday of a long weekend. So Friday's Good Friday and uh, Easter weekend. So ha if you have something you'd like to learn uh, before Easter, hopefully... You guys will join us here next Thursday. I know a few people are heading out camping or going to see a few relatives now that we're allowed to sort of socialize in, in small groups outdoors. Maybe some people will have some weekend plans. We don't. We have nothing going on. I, I only work. I'm, I just have a, <laughs> we I have no lives. horrible life. But I love what I do. This is my family and friends time. After this, it's all dark and uh, loud music. And, <laughs> He's and so dramatic. So next Thursday, you, you haven't seen my place. I got I don't have furniture. I have a drum set and six guitars in my living room. <laughs> you should see people's faces when they walk in. They're like, "What do you do here?" <laughs> right on the walls. Oh, anyway, but um, but yeah, no, just uh, yeah, yeah, I, I like it here. Um, so if you have suggestions for what you'd like to learn <laughs> next week or in the upcoming uh, in upcoming and upcoming episodes, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, we do have some sponsors that are coming up for some classes, and they've got some really fun ideas that they want us I to work on. I want a big halibut chop. Halibut, a yes. Full halibut chop. Like. Halibut season just started, so we're working with the BC halibut folks, and uh, we have a halibut class coming up soon. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll see you here next Thursday night. In the meantime, if you're in Langley, stop into Well Season. We'd love to say hi. Stick your head in the kitchen. Give Chef a wave. And um, Kitty, post the pictures of your cauliflower. We want to see how it turned so out. So proud of you, Kitty. Yeah. So enjoy your evening, enjoy the recipes, and we'll see you right we'll see here you. next Thursday. Next Thursday.